Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the Parapilot of the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled, The Parapilot. This is the story of a parapilot team in Korea, members of the Tactical Air Command, who by an ingenious method, direct a knockout punch to enemy ground forces from behind their own lines. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, college men, there's a great new opportunity in your United States Air Force, because it's an important new job for aircraft observer officers, men who can apply mathematics to the practical problems of flight, men who can deal with complex equipment and exacting problems. If you've had two or more years of college, and if you can qualify for intensive aviation cadet training, the Air Force will give you a year's postgraduate study with pay. Yours will be an important job which can be filled only by the finest young men. Visit your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station today for full details. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Para Pilot. Do you know what a parapilot is? A parapilot's a fighter pilot who parachutes to the ground so he can direct airstrikes at enemy ground troops. He jumps into or beyond the front lines. The parapilot is part of TAF, the Tactical Air Force. It's up to TAC, the Tactical Air Command, to provide Air Force cooperation with land, naval, or amphibious forces. In the field, it becomes a tactical air force. And it's the job of the tactical air force to keep enemy planes from attacking our own frontline troops, to cut off enemy ground troops from supplies, reinforcements, and communications, and to knock out enemy guns, troops, or positions which the army, for one reason or another, cannot get to with their own weapons. In general, this means close-up support of our frontline troops. And practically no one gets any closer than a parapilot team. It's nighttime in Korea. We're at a joint operational center not far below the 38th parallel. Here, ground forces, men, and Air Force men are hard at work acting as a team. A message has just come in through the Army control net from the 10th Division that a company of infantry has been cut off on Hill 288. Another message from Captain Mallet's division, sir. They're still cut off on Hill 288. Yes, I know. What's the situation there now? Division says the front will remain relatively quiet for the rest of the night. Company sees pretty well dug in. There's no indication of immediate danger, though the enemy has them completely surrounded. From the buildup in the area, the commanding general, 10th Division, expects the enemy to attack early tomorrow. Looks as though Mallet is outnumbered, at least five to one. Hmm. Hill 288. You can see it on this map. About 100 miles southeast of Pyongyang, just about on the parallel. It's part of this spiny ridge that runs generally north and south here. Yeah, I've been there. Pretty rugged country. There's a range of hills. 288 is about the highest. That's right. Captain Mallet probably had orders to hold Hill 288, if at all possible. That was before his company was cut off. Now it's probably the safest place for him to be. Wasn't a relief column sent to help him? Yes, it was, but it didn't get through. What state are the supplies in, Captain? Their immediate situation isn't desperate. They have supplies for a short time, but uh, they need relief as soon as possible. Right. Well, I think we all know the situation now. Another relief column? Army G2 says even if they started now, they couldn't get through in time. This is a job for the Air Force. We'll set up a pre-planned close support strike and drop in supplies. Better send a pair of pilot team in there first. Captain Moore, get a pair of pilot team here for a briefing right away. Lieutenant Andrew Schaefer is an experienced tactical pilot with 50 fighter-bomber missions behind him. 
He's well acquainted with the tactics required to provide accurate close air support. He's 26 years old and comes from Mount Carmel, Illinois. He's been specially trained at Air Ground School in Southern Pines, North Carolina as a para-pilot. At Southern Pines, he was teamed with Sergeant Ray Carroll from Keene, New Hampshire, an Air Force radio technician who has received special jump training at Lawson Air Force Base, Georgia. At Lawson, Lieutenant Schaefer and Sergeant Carroll learn jumping techniques, becoming adept at jumping with all the necessary radio equipment from aerial troop transports. These two men constitute a para-pilot team. Okay, Ray, off we go into the wild black yonder. Uh, I was having such nice dreams. Don't you ever get nervous? Not me. I figure if the lieutenant thinks he can do it, I guess I can do it, too. And carrying the baby besides. Yeah, a mighty big baby. They call this VHF radio outfit a portable. Sort of a king-size walkie-talkie, but it's a lot more portable in a plane or jeep than it is for us to lug around. Yeah, it wouldn't be much good without it, though. I wonder where the idea started, taking fellows like us and making a jump team out of it. I think it was started in North Africa or Italy. They didn't jump then. They had forward air controllers on the ground with and ahead of the troops. Mm. How'd you get into it? Volunteered. Never knew I'd end up a jumper. I heard about these parapilot teams that seemed like a good idea. Yeah, well, it is. It is. Take a pilot like me, I know what a fighter bomber can do and what it can't do. Then team a guy like me with a fellow like you who can keep radio communications open, we become an effective air ground team. Listening to Colonel back there, I got an idea that this was a lot like one of the practice jumps we made together down Georgia. Right? Yeah, yeah, well, it's a good thing for us. On our first real jump, we get something that sounds like a tactical problem. I'm not worrying so much about a night jump. We did enough of those. Just hope they're expecting us. Company C, that Oh, is. they'll be expecting us. <laughs> you know, I wish in a way we'd get there and get started. Still, we shouldn't have too much trouble. It looks like we're here. Yeah. If they're ready for us. There's a plane warming up. Mm. All right, you take care of the equipment. I'll check in and out. Sure. As the fella says, here we go again. <laughs> Parapilot team, Lieutenant Schaefer and Sergeant Carroll, get themselves checked in and out and get their equipment into the plane that will carry them up to and over the front lines and drop them on Hill 288. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the hill and see how Company C is making out. Regular as clockwork, aren't they? You notice, Gus? Every four and a half minutes, they put one of those things in their mortar and lob it over here. Yeah, I never thought I'd brutal up rocks so much. The way we were dug in, though, they'd have to blast to get us out of here. The way the gun's placed, we can knock off anything trying to come up this hill, as long as the ammo holds out. Watch it. Take it easy there, Mac. You start shooting all the boulders around here, and we'll be sitting with an empty gun before you know it. Honest, Gus, I thought it was moving. When do you think our help will get here? I heard help is coming. <sighs> I don't know. We usually get what we need one way or another. No, Mike, when I first set eyes on this hill, I wouldn't have given you a nickel for it. Now I'm getting sort of fond of it. I've been in a lot worse places. I guess if we had enough supplies, we could stay here forever. Well, that's Brass's worry, not mine. Our worry, yours and mine, is that open space there in front of us. If we can keep that there clear, that's all we can do. The captain and the others, it's up to them to keep us supplied, and I guess they will. They always do. I don't see how they can do it this time. They're in time. Oh, there's another flare. Is that one of ours? It was right in the same spot. They must be digging quite a hole there. Yeah, that's all right with me, just as long as they don't change their range or elevation. The hole is there, not here. Another one. They're all off their schedule without notifying us. Is that polite? Well, maybe they went on daylight saving time all of a sudden. Or maybe that came from a different mortar. <laughs> We're getting close. Funny, I always have the feeling when we drop a flare, we're making ourselves a perfect target. Yeah, with all that light, you think they must be able to see it from the ground. Yeah. Man, on the ground can't see through that light, though. Yeah. You notice back there where we dropped those two flares, that small cut between those two hills? Sure. Enemy gun emplacements in the valley would be in perfect position to keep anything from coming up that road. You have to get through that cut to get up front. Yeah. Were you thinking what I was? 
Bet I was, Lieutenant. The guns can be seen by our fighter bombers. Maybe we could bomb and silence them. And then a tank-led column could get past the smaller guns and clean them out. All right, mark those coordinates on the grid, huh? I already marked the position, sir. Oh, See? Here? Yeah. Every place I put an X right here on uh, grid queen. Coordinates 35, 20, and 33, 21. Right. Now, hey, I think we got there. it. Oh, wait a minute. I guess the pilot wants to talk to us. We're over Hill 288 now. She requested of circling beyond. We'll drop more flares so you can see the rest of the terrain. Right. Light up the place for a long time, don't they? Yeah. The flares seem to drop slower in their parachutes than we do in ours. No, no. Hey, look, there they go. One, two. The two of them. Did you say they couldn't see through the light to shoot at us from the ground? I bet I did. Yeah, well, maybe they can't, but their radar can. You see the troops? You got them spotted? Yeah, spotted and marked down. What's this, more flag? Yeah, well, we're being given the grand tour around Hill 288 in eight minutes or something while they drop the airlift of supplies and ammo. It looks like troops there. And there. Yeah, yeah another couple of flares. All right, mark those troop positions, huh? Okay. I got them spotted and marked. Yeah. Boy, they really are surrounded, aren't they? Yeah, well, you needn't say they. Pretty soon it'll be we. Us. <laughs> well, us, we, whatever you want to call it. While you're still with me, I think I'll take a look, see up ahead, see if we can spot the build-up and locations. All right, fine. The more we know, the more we can do. There's something moving down there. Looks like a convoy traveling without lights. Can't be sure, but I swear something's going on. We'll see in a second. I just dropped a flare. What? Yeah. Hey, it's a convoy, all right. A long one. Moving slow. Shh, must be 40 trucks, maybe more. Did you catch that? Yeah, we certainly did. From what we saw, I'd say it a guess those are the supplies for the attack they hope to make on Hill 288. There's still a couple of hours from getting there, though, at the rate they're moving and on the road they've got to take. However fast they are, they're slowed down now. They stopped when we dropped our flares. Take them a little while to get them straightened out, or they're more efficient than we are, which I doubt. We're turning back now. We'll be over our target in a few minutes. Oh, fine, thanks. Well, we're set, aren't we? Yes, sir. Set as we'll ever be, I guess. Hey, look, am I that good an example? Can't you even look frightened? Me? Yeah. If you want to know the truth, I'm scared to death. <laughs> For a jump, I always am. Well, that's good. That makes me feel better. But you don't show it. Well, I can't. Remember? Not when you look so calm. All right. Now, look, we land together with our equipment. Just like the night jumps at Lawson Air Base. Right now. All right, there go our flares. I'll go first. After you, sir. We're slowed down at jump speed. You can see everything. Jump one at a time on signal in about ten seconds. Any time you say, we're all set. One at a time. I'll signal for you. Good luck. Thanks. Oh, and thanks for the lift, too. I'll do the same for you someday. Not if I can help it, bud. All right, now. Ready? Five, four, three, two, jump one. <laughs> jump two. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production, The Parapilot. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. America's finest young men are getting into the blue of the United States Air Force. If you're interested in your share of democracy, your future in the free world, and in the exciting life of a pilot or aircraft observer, see if you can qualify for training as an aviation cadet. If you're between 19 and 26 and a half years of age, have at least two years of college, are single and in good physical condition, See your Army and Air Force recruiter about your future in the United States Air Force Aviation Cadet Program. For full information, visit your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Parapilot. Carol, you all right? Yeah, I'm right here, sir. Oh. Right as rain, I think. 
Oh, glad to be on the ground. Yeah, now we gotta get in touch with Company C. All right, you uh, want to get in touch with anybody except St. Peter, I'd sort of move if I was you. All right, which way, though? Which anyway, way? but fast. There's a mortar on one of them hills over there keeps lobbing shells in right about where you are every four and a half minutes, and they haven't sent one for about three minutes. All right, 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 we're coming. Yeah. There's just about room here for us, but you're welcome to try to squeeze in. Oh, thanks. What's that thing? A oh, portable two-way radio transmitter. As I live and breathe, a walkie-talkie coming right out of the sky. I was hoping for ammunition and reserves. When I saw you guys coming, I figured they were sending paratroopers to help us. <laughs> what do we get? A couple of flyboys. Well, I take it this is part of Company C. It sure is. Well, I want to try to contact the Tactical Air Control Party of 10th Division and check in. You better wait a second. Why? You see? Right on schedule. And right where we were standing. Oh, thanks. Think nothing of it, my friend. Yeah. Well, we ought to... Be able to do this on batteries. Yeah, sure, Lieutenant. This should be brief. Any time now. Antenna's up. Jumper one from destination able. Jumper one from destination able, calling Peter Obo. Come in, jumper one. This is Peter Obo standing by. Jumper one reporting. We're on destination able. Stand by for further report. Standing by. Roger. Jumper one out. Well, now I've seen everything. That gadget cooked too. I could use a hamburger, plenty of onion. Pickle and relish for me, no onion. Got a date? And I wish I did. Hey, hey, this is Captain's Jeep. Oh? Thought somebody would come looking for you. They'll take you back. Drop in again any time. Don't bother to ring. Thank you, we'll do that. Yeah, just bring a blonde next time. This would be a right cozy little place for this fixed up, right? Oh, it's got to be a blonde, though. Huh? Speaking That's for right. myself, no. We'll leave that to you. Okay, come on, Ray. We better go see the captain. Right. We're back on the ground again. We go by Jeep. So, that's the way it is. From the reports we were getting from our scouts, if they weren't planning a night infiltration, I'd have been surprised. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd been wondering about that, Captain Mallet. Yeah, it's their usual tactic. I had a feeling they would try it just about the time you arrived. It's, uh... It's quite likely your flares threw them off. Yeah, or maybe they were waiting for that convoy we saw to arrive. Or they may have thought the convoy would be close enough so they could count on it, and it wasn't. Well, whatever it was, all indications were they'd attack, and they didn't. Yeah, but... If they had attacked, we could have beaten them off. I'm confident of that. But, uh, we couldn't have done it indefinitely. Mm. My men are tired, our forces are limited, and we need more supplies. Yeah, oh, uh, did you recover our drop? Ninety percent. Makes me feel a lot more secure. That's good. Well, I think we know the situation now. We'll send back our report. It'll be getting light in a little while. I think they'll attack then under any conditions, unless we can hit them first and keep them off balance. <laughs> the parapilot team of Lieutenant Schaefer and Sergeant Carroll report by radio. Their message was picked up several miles back by the air controller of the TACP, consisting of a small mobile unit, a jeep containing receiving, transmitting, and generating equipment. Jumper 1 calling Peter Obo from Destination Able. Jumper 1 calling Peter Obo. Go ahead, Jumper 1. This is Peter Obo. Company C surrounded on Destination Able. Food and medical supplies adequate for time being. Ammunition short. Do you read? Go ahead, Jumper One. Read you loud and clear. There's an enemy convoy bringing up supplies. Forty-five minutes ago, it was across the plain on the far side of Penguin Hill. South of here on Grid Queen, our gun emplacements had probably stopped our relief convoy earlier. There are five mortars on Hills 178 and 171, Grid Peter. We'll probably need some close support strafing attacks. Right. We'll relay your message. Roger. Jumper one, standing by for further instructions. Jumper one out. Relay that message from our parapilot team on Hill 288 back to JLC through your Army Net 3 at once. Urgent. Now the situation is in the hands of Colonel Bingham and the other experts at the Joint Operational Center. The different aspects of the problem are discussed and plans are jointly agreed on. The group at the center awaits results and considers new reports as they come in. Dawn is beginning to break, sending fingers of light probing over an unhappy, war-torn land. A squadron of F-84 fighter bombers, Thunderjets, have started out for Hill 288. 
Now listening for word on their radios from Lieutenant Schaefer, the air ground controller. Schaefer and Sergeant Carroll, after informing Company C that a squadron of fighter bombers is being dispatched to help, go back to take up their frontline positions. Hiya, Mac. We're back again. <laughs> you said not the phone, just drop in. That's how we told you to bring a blind. Uh, I told Captain Mallow we'd set up near you and use your field phone to contact him. I thought you boys had about the best observation post on the hill. Thought maybe we'd dig in near you. Not too close, though. I don't like your four-and-a-half-minute mortar, nor your own machine gun. It makes too much noise for our purposes. Hey, Lieutenant. Yeah? It's a pretty good spot right here. Good view and a certain amount of protection from the rear. What's going to happen? Well, in a few minutes, a squadron of F-84 should appear. We get in touch with them by radio, tell them what to hit and where. You better get over to my litter transmitter, get to work. I'll see you later. You better get your pals here soon. It's an unavoidable part of the parapilot's job that to be effective, he must be in a position to observe the enemy. And in order to observe the enemy, it's almost impossible not to be observed. Because their portable transmitter signal has a limited range, and because of the speed at which the planes will come, there will be little time before the Thunder Jets are over their target once radio contact has been established. Jumper 1 calling Foxtrot Blue Leader. Jumper 1 calling Foxtrot Blue Leader. Do you read? Anything yet? No, no, nothing. wonder where they can be. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They're coming in now. The map's all laid out? Yeah, yeah, everything's right here. Jumper 1 calling Foxtrot Blue Leader. You're coming in faintly. We're on Hill 288 Grid Peter. Coordinates 1843. That's 18-43. Read you now, Jumper 1. Grid Peter, 18-43. This is Jumper 1, enemy convoy of about 40 trucks just south of Penguin Hill. Roger, Jumper 1. Jumper 1, now, Grid Queen. Gun emplacements well dug in, stopping our tank columns. On eastern side, Hill 178, western side, Hill 161. Grid Queen coordinates 3520 and 3321. Can you see them? Roger, Jumper 1. Queen 35-20 and 33-21. Don't have them in sight. Correction, have them spotted. Blue leader to white flight. Stop that convoy with rockets, then strafe. Go ahead, Jumper 1. White flight will take care of convoy. Jumper 1 to Foxtrot, blue leader. New enemy attack beginning down here. Enemy troops in five main concentrations. Do you have napalm? Roger, Jumper 1. We have napalm. Attack is coming from Grid Peter 12-47. There's a tree halfway down the hill. Do you see it, Blue Leader? Roger. Have tree spotted. That's where we want the napalm. Jumper 1 have instructed one flight, which has spotted gun emplacements, to dive bomb those positions. Circle back to cover my flight while we're napalming. I think that took him completely by surprise. Yeah. Oh. Gee, I'd like to get those mortars, too. I've been tracing that trajectory. I think I got them all spotted. Here, they're marked here. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Captain Mallet's calling. Yes, Captain. They did. Yeah, it looks pretty good here, too. Okay, I'll tell him. I think that strike knocked out or disrupted the main groups on the ground. Yeah. The ones who'd already started. Look at him. Still coming. All right, how was that? Blue flight still has rockets. What now? You can make your strafing attacks on the north side of the hill. Hit the attackers coming up with machine guns. Roger. Have them spotted. Tally ho. That's going to slow up their attack. Oh, no, I think it's busted up for good right now. <laughs> we still have our rockets. Any more targets? Well, if we can get those mortars that are hitting around us, there seem to be five of them. About 
Grid Peter 46-59, 48-66, 49-46, 10-62, and 13-64. Roger. Marking their positions. We should be able to see them as we come in. Will do, Jumper 1. Low leader to other flight leaders. Form up over Hill 288 and give us top cover while we strafe the mortars. Lieutenant, I think the planes had conked them mortars. First time in a long while I felt free to walk away from a gun. Oh, good. I don't think you'll see much movement there for quite a while. Well, I better give the leader a call. Blue leader, this is Jumper One. Thanks for a fine show. Roger, Jumper One. Fighters returning to base. Right. Thanks. Uh, Lieutenant, I want to say thanks, too. It's a funny thing, though, we go all over the world. Here we are, three of us. Guess I'll have to treat you sort of a neighbor then. <laughs> Besides, you boys, well, we're in a lot better position than I thought we'd be. I mean, we still got supplies left, thanks to your airdrop, and not much of the enemy. Not right here, anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's been about six minutes. I think we quieted that mortar, too. Gus, the machine gunner from Company C, can kid that they're sort of neighbors. But what he was really talking about was teamwork. Teamwork and partnership that doesn't depend on latitude or longitude. The kind of teamwork that comes from people with the same kind of training and basic ideals, whether they were born in Maine or California, in Minnesota or Texas. The kind of teamwork that sent the parapilot team to Hill 288, that sent for the F-84s to break up the enemy air attack, that shot up the enemy convoy bringing reinforcements, that cleared up those annoying mortars behind the next hills, that blasted the big gun emplacement so that a relief column could get through and Company C could go back behind the lines for a well-deserved rest. Proudly we hail the Parapilot, a highly trained unit of the Tactical Air Force and all the officers and men of the USAF Air Ground Operations School whose training makes this kind of successful teamwork possible. Here's a message from your United States Air Force to you. You have a chance to join the key men on the Air Force's flying team as an aircraft observer. Yes, you can be one of the men who plot the sky tracks of the heavy bombers and the big transports if you look ahead now while you're in college. Here's what you can do. You can take a year's training with pay, and after graduation as an aviation cadet, become a flying officer team member with the silver wings of an aircraft observer. But can you qualify? You can if you're between 19 and 26 and a half, single, are in good physical condition, of high moral standards, and have had two or more years of college training. For full information, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>